Hello there and welcome to my quick guide for a powerful and easy science setup for Gleba. All you need to do is insert some jelly nut and some Yumeko and you're good to go. So this setup here produces 120 to 135 signs per minute and it is very easy to pull off. I have a blueprint for it in the description box so if you just want to copy and paste it feel free to. I took a lot of uh, attention to this build to be low cost. The blue belt in the middle can be replaced with red belt. It will reduce the efficiency of the whole setup by roughly 20%, but uh, it's not the end of the day uh, at all. You will be using a lot of this uh, setup's uh, efficiency already with red belts is all I want to say. So. Like I said, it's a code to import it is in the description box. The rest of the video, I just want to explain to you how the build works, what kind of things you need, and uh, for those who are interested in optimizing it, because there's room for improvement in this one after all, the explanations of the system. But if you are in a hurry and you just want to copy that blueprint, I just want to give you following numbers to work with. You will need 32 Yumeko patches to get the amount of Yumeko together to keep this uh, running forever and 13 to 14 jelly nut patches. That's the numbers behind it. Everything else I will now explain during the video but if you wanted to you could use the blueprint from here on and provide it and uh, get the show going. Now to the system itself. The idea was to set up a uh, science facility that utilizes most of the throughput of one biochamber producing nutrients like crazy. I succeeded somewhat decently with that, although currently I am limited by bulk inserters. You could really use stack inserters at that one. This would be the uh, last update uh, upgrade that I haven't done here at this build, but bulk inserters are really good enough. So. This is practically as much as you can link to one of these facilities without making the build too costly or too complicated. The thing about this is easily said. We put in roughly five Yumeko per second to turn them into mash and roughly two um, jelly nut per second to turn them into jelly. Process that stuff into bioflux. Bioflux gets processed into nutrients. Nutrients get spread all over the place to power the biochambers, but the main uh, purpose of that is to fire up the pentapod breeding chambers, which then lead the pentapod eggs down to the science facilities. The science facilities grab that bioflux from here and put out sweet, sweet green science, as you see there. This facility is also generating enough heat. As you see, the pentapod eggs are getting piped past the labs, and every pentapod egg that didn't get used for science gets immediately incinerated at the heating tower. So altogether, you also generate enough power to uh, power up this whole facility by itself, which is pretty, pretty nifty. So here are a couple of details that are super important when you want to build facilities like these yourself. I did all the configurations on the inserters here for you, but these are so darned important. Rule number one, everything needs to have a uh, spoilage exit. As you see here, there's already spoiled fruit on the belt. Doesn't matter too much because everything spoiled eventually gets extracted. This is sort of a problem once there are entire streaks of spoiled fruit on your belt, but uh, all in all, I haven't have, uh, in the worst case scenario, will spoil to the end of the build and then it will get extracted. That means your spoilage extractors should always sit at the end of the build to make sure the system will eventually always unclog itself. Then also super important to note here is that these inserters sometimes can clog up with spoilage if things spoil in their hands. This is absolutely obnoxious, it rarely happens, but uh, you should keep an eye on it. This is one of the things that can clog up your system. And uh, the thing here is though, if it ever happens, it will not destroy the throughput, because every belt, like I have said, has a spoilage um, extractor, and here, Eventually, these guys would drop off their spoilage, the 
a Mako Mash that's spoiled in their hands and would get extracted back here. I have done my best to add in as many fail safes as possible into this build, and so far it hasn't clocked up yet in several hours of runtime. Let me know if you find a failure there, a, a problem there in the comments so I can fix it. I will do so and uh, update the code uh, um, accordingly. So, the other thing that's really important is every inserter that outputs something needs to be exactly configured. So if you ever are dumb enough to have this one not extracting only you make a mash, sometimes it might have the keen idea to extract some spoilage or some seeds. My entire factory here broke down once because these funky fellas here thought it would be a fun idea to mix in a couple of seeds which then never get extracted from this build. So golden rule with biochamber recipes or basically everything that has more than one output Every output inserter needs to be labeled. We have here a sewage network outside of this whole thing. So every build and every machine has some ending where it outputs onto the sewage, where it then gets burned eventually. So if you ever notice that you are racking up more spoilage that you can and then you can destroy, you just need a couple of extra inserters. This is usually not happening, but Glaber is a wild planet and uh, no, no two setups are the same. So as you see here now, the spoilage gets uh, now removed. And there's always some spoilage on the build, but you don't need to worry about that, as long as there's always some good stuff in the vicinity, and there's some extractor at the end of the build. That's, that's that. So, basic principle on things that could be improved. Here I'm still running, like I said, bulk inserters, which should be stack inserters. Because as you see here, the nutrient output is not running uh, empty at all. And uh, this build also does not use all the nutrients that this thing here produces. But I do notice that due to the lacking inserters, you see there's uh, short breaks where these aren't working. But that doesn't matter too much because of the fact that I am okay with 120 signs per minute. You can improve on these builds by adding in higher quality uh, building parts, but the goal of this build was in the first place to have something which you can print down quickly and make yourself uh, happen quickly. Because at the end of the day, this thing only requires 20 bio chambers with 31 pieces of blue belt being the most expensive part of this entire build. I had the thought in mind that people coming into this planet will not always have the most resources available, and yeah, I hope you like it. Like I said, code's in the description box. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it. I calculated that this thing would make 135 science if it works on full speed, and I think realistically with the current uh, pieces that I'm using, it's 120. You could also add in modules, obviously. These bio chambers can be heavily influenced by modules as well, but you would need to increase on the quality of the builds. I didn't here because, like I said, this is more of a civilian type module. I might one day conceptualize a uh, bigger gun like that if you wanted to. Let me know in the comment section. Either way, thanks for watching. I don't have much more to say. You just can copy paste it, put these uh, plants in there, and enjoy yourself that science to get free from this planet. Because I saw a lot of people being uh, quite desperate on getting decent numbers on this, it's pretty easy. You just need to put in these two ingredients there and uh, put in some bioflux into the center, and uh, then some pentapod eggs down here, and the machinery starts all for itself. So, let me know if you have anything to add into. I'm very, very eager to know. And obviously, check out the description box. There's a playlist uh, to many other Factorio tutorials that I made for Space Age specifically. And of course, feel free to support Icon Gaming. I'm really happy if you do. And many thanks to all of you who are already supporting the channel. And of course, a lot of thanks for watching this video up until the very end. It means a lot to me. And I hope this little machinery here will help you on your Glaber adventures. See you soon, and bye-bye.